Hi guys and welcome to Mighty Lawns on YouTube channel. I'm your host DK. So you're watching a live episode of Lawn Talk 101 and I want to give you some a little bit of tips on what you would need to start your lawn care business. And you see the photograph there. But let's talk about some of these things. Now of course you're going to need a truck. You're going to need, you know, your general items, your mower. Uh, I would suggest even a toolbox to keep your tools inside in case you have breakdowns while you're at a customer site hopefully that never happens of course you need your you know your backpack blower weed eater edger stick edger of course and you know some trimmers pruners different things of that nature now let's get a little bit more you know in depth with this uh, topic a lot of people say hey I'm gonna start this lawn care business I'm gonna start with an open closed trailer well here's why I would not start with an open closed trailer. You have to think about vandalism, theft, okay? People are gonna steal your things and I know that's not what you wanna think about starting your lawn care business, but it's gonna happen. So what better way to secure all of your, basically your, your money making tools than to have it in an enclosed trailer. Now whether that be a, a van, uh, box truck something of that nature where you know that your equipment is secure at all times also what you want to start out with which I would say is even if you started off with a van that's a like a walking billboard and what do, what do I mean by walking billboard well you have your advertising there 24 7 sort of like the World Wide Web people can see you from a mile away, whether you're on the freeway, you're in traffic, no matter where you are, you're at a standstill at a customer site, they see you without you ever having, you know, having to open up your mouth or even giving a business card. They're already checking you out on the World Wide Web via your billboard. And, and, I, and I think that's a great thing. And, and then let's get into a, another part of it when we're talking about advertisement, having shirts, hats, Things of that nature that's going to help you garner more business. Because that's what this thing's all about, you know. Also, you don't want to charge too low. You know, this is a lot of hard work and you'll be out there sometimes by yourself, sun up, sun down. So make sure you get paid what you're worth. We'll see you next time on Lawn Talk 101 with more tips on how to start your lawn care business. Your host DK here. Remember, like us, subscribe to us on the Mighty Lawns channel. See you next time. Hey guys, welcome to Mighty Lawns, your YouTube channel. Listen, your host here, DK. Remember, like us, subscribe to us on the network, Mighty Lawns slash YouTube.com. Let's get right into this thing. I want to show you on part two of the seven part series of how to start a lawn care business in. I think the biggest thing you want to do is brand your business. And what do I mean by that? Not only, you know, establishing a, a, a lawn care business in the community, but when I say brand, I mean get a logo. You know, design a logo, or if not, find a marketing team who can design your logo and find a printing company that can put your brand out there so people can recognize you no matter what. Even if you didn't have words on your truck or you know your lettering on your on your vehicle on your trailers you know branding is a big part of the industry i believe you want people to recognize your vans your trucks trailers you want them to be able to recognize them if they were on the freeway out of millions of cars you want your clientele base to know and even people who are not your clients hey that's Mighty Moms, or you know, that's the company that provides service in our area. That's what some of the top dogs do now. Remember, when I put these videos together, it's not for your average Joe who's just going door to door trying to get money. You know, if you're really serious about making money in the lawn care industry, you need to brand yourself. Now, some of the other things you're going to need, as we talked about in part one of the seven part series, is you know, we're going to touch on it right now. As you see here, you're going to need a hat. You know, you need hats for all of your workers. It's going to help them in numerous ways. And also, like I said before, there's your brand. You know, your logo's out there. And you guys are looking professional. You're going to need some shirts. Once again, you're going to need those logos in your company's name on those shirts. You want people to recognize you. You want to stand out from your competition because this is a race. Is it not? Exactly. 
You don't want to be the teenage kid. You know, some people might say, hey, that's your competition. In essence, you could say so, but not really. This guy is just looking, and when I say this guy, I mean the teenage kid. He's just looking to make the, you know, some quick bucks to perhaps pay for college or pay for an old Honda Civic or something like that to get him from uh, point A to point B for his new job. Now, if you're really serious about this, you have to put the time and effort into it, and you're going to need different tools. You, know, you don't want to be that guy. You know, in another series that I'm going to be touching on, the hustler versus the professional in terms of lawn care. You know, you don't want to be that so-called hustler to go door to door with a gas can, and when people ask you, "Okay, what's the name of your business?" or "Can I have your number?" you don't even have a business card to pull out. You, know, you, you pull out a a piece of paper and oh let me go find my pen so you can write your information down that's tacky you know I'm, I'm sorry to be so blunt well not really but you know just you don't want to be that person you don't want to be that guy if you're really serious about making money once again brand your company also a lot of people might say you know start out by yourself I would say not you know I think and, and for those of you that are working or even if you're not working and, and I'm sure a few people are going to disagree with me. The biggest thing you want to do is find yourself a worker because you're going to need the help. So why not, you know, just go ahead, you know, pay that minimum wage or even a little bit more. You know what? It doesn't hurt nine dollars an hour. I know that's what the guys make around here in my area. Pay your worker nine dollars an hour. First of all, you look professional. Second of all, you get the job done a lot faster than breaking your back and, you know, all the sweat and all that you have to go through doing this thing by yourself. It's hard enough having to do it by yourself on the back end as far as coming up with marketing, you know, all your marketing strategy, strategies, the tools, things of that nature. So tip number two, get a worker. You know, you have to have a worker. Not only does it get the job done adequately and faster, but you guys look more professional doing this. So let's recap a little bit here as I close out. Brand your company, you know, if you don't have a marketing team when you first start off, hey, guess what? You are the marketing team. Sit down for hours and hours, you know, at, at ends, you know, and just, you know, come up with a great strategic plan for your business. Because people have to remember, this is your baby. This is you. When when, when your you know customers see you and see your business, this is you. You're not working for the big boss man. You're not working for corporate America any longer. This is you. This is your baby. So you have to treat it as such. Once again, I'm your host, DK. Follow us along. Also, for all of our uh, subscribers from Trade Day 1982, check us out on new channel, Mighty Lawns. Have more videos coming soon. Hey, we'll see you next time on Mighty Lawns. Guys, welcome back to Mighty Lawns. Your host, DK, here. Remember, like and subscribe to us on the network. Trade Day 1982 along with Mighty Lawns. All right, let's get back into it. You know, this is part three of the seven part series of how to start a lawn care business. And, you know, some of the topics we've touched on is branding and also things that you're going to need. So let's get right back into the things that you're going to need to start your lawn care business. I prefer, like I said before in video one, start out with a van. You know, don't put your self and your business at risk by starting out with a truck. Even though they might seem cheap, you can find that cargo vans can be relatively cheap as well. I say van over a truck because you have to look at it this way. Unless you have a camper, you have all your equipment, unless you have a garage. Um, that's easy access for, you know, people to steal. And what's going to hurt you most when you're just starting out? <clears throat> Someone stealing your equipment. That's how you make your money. That is your money, your, all your lawn care equipment. So start it with the van. Then, you know, some of the things we touched on in uh, video number two was, of course, branding, you know, getting your logo out there, creating that logo, you know, finding a marketing team. If you don't have one, you yourself, you are the marketing team because this is very, this is, this is pivotal. It's paramount that you brand yourself. This is your baby and you need to get your name out there, you know. Now, let's touch into it in video three okay get your website going and don't just have a generic website you know if that's what you want to do that's fine but if you you really got to think about it you want to stand out you know what when you look at other companies out there and not just lawn care you know where do you eat every day 
If you smoke cigarettes, what kind of cigarettes do you smoke? You know, how do you find these things that you love? Is it because they're so bland or is it because they stand out from the rest? Or maybe you grew up on them. You know, I'm sure there's different things that you like in today's society that have that are branded. You recognize this logo over everything else. So that's a big thing. So let's get down to it. OK, so for those of you, you know, I've talked about having a trailer and all that kind of stuff. Start out, starting out with a box truck or a van, get things like that, you know, to get get started, you know, get you professional equipment. And the biggest help I would say would be Craigslist. You know, a lot of people don't want to do that. A lot of people want to go out there and use their credit up and buy all these big zero turn mowers. No, that's not fine. You know, I don't agree with that because you don't have those big accounts to pay for it. So why start out in debt? That's the worst decision that anyone can ever make. That's basically a moron. Don't do that. You know, use the money if you guys are working 40 hour jobs. Use the money that you would spend on your <laughs> big coffee house shop every day or your big smoke shop, you know, every day or however you spend your money or at your local food eatery. You know, start spending that money towards yourself. You know, and I know you, you're saying right now, well, I am spending money on myself, but not really. You know, as I said before in part two, you know, buy yourself, you know, get yourself a worker. It makes everything, it, it'll make your life much more easier knowing that, hey, you know what? I have a goal of 30 to 40 clients a day. I can, I can knock out with a couple of guys five yards per hour. And that's what you really want to do. You know, if you're not making about $1,600 a day, what are you doing? You know, maybe even bare minimum should be 800 today. What are you doing? You can calculate the numbers. This is easy, guys. This is easy. So, you know, get your business cards out there. You know, there's lots of companies, you know, for those of you thinking, oh, that's cost a lot of money. There's lots of companies out there that you can get business cards <laughs> close to 300 cards for about $10, sometimes even free. And all you got to do is pay for shipping and handling. OK, research these companies. You know, maybe some of these companies can help you brand your business. OK, so you need business cards. You need a website. This is all a part of branding. OK, you need a nice vehicle. You know, go to when you start out with a vehicle. Have a start date. Don't just say I'm going to start tomorrow. You know, have something, have some goals set up, you know, get that whatever your colors are going to be. And for those of you who are saying, Wow, what, what the hell is he talking about colors? I'm talking about the groundwork for your business. Have some colors that in the future you're going to stand out from your competition because you're going to have lots of competition who's ready to take your clientele. And you're going to have clientele who's not loyal from the get-go. They're going to be ready to leave at the drop of a dime, okay? So go ahead and stand out so people can always recognize you, okay? So get those get those colors and, you know, the the... Like I said, my colors are green and khaki. I feel like green is the best color to go with in terms of lawn care. You identify that uh, with lawn care, the color green, just as you do red being uh, for firemen or the blue and black or black and white for police. You guys know what I'm talking about. OK, so you're going to need to brand yourself to get yourself going. Come up with a catchy name. You know, don't just be lawn cutter guy next door. I mean, you know, a cut above the rest, you know, come up with something catchy. Really think about this, because once again, this is your baby. You know, even though we say the word or term business, this is really your baby. Think about it that way. How do you treat your baby? And you want to do your business the same way, the same way you have to treat it as such, because you really want to be able to get off the ground running. OK, so professional equipment. Always go with that. There's always some guys on Craigslist that thought they could do the business and they'll They'll basically give this equipment away, but you have to do the research. OK, you have to do it. Um, some other things you have to think about, especially in terms of, you know, getting a worker is, you know, how you're going to pay that guy. You know, you, you've got to break that down, you know, that debt to income ratio type of thing. You need to apply it as well to your lawn care business because you need to know uh, even in terms of clients, how much how much a customer is costing you. You know, you, you, some of these things you have to know at the gate, you know. Also, <laughs> we'll go ahead and, and, and cut to video four. But in, in the next video, we're going to talk about, you know, cutting down time 
while you're in a vehicle. How much time are you spending in a vehicle? Once again, you're looking at Mighty Lawns, your host DK here. Remember, like us, subscribe to us, and check out all of our other videos, Lawn Talk 101 on the network, Trade Day 1982. We'll see you next time, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Mighty Lawns. Remember, like us, subscribe to us on our channel, and comment below. All right, so let's get back into this thing. We are talking about how to start your lawn care business and things that you need. Of course, we're talking about branding, getting your business cards out there and, you know, becoming a force in your community. Now, what we're going to touch on in part four of this series is basically becoming part of a network. So you got planted out there, you know, start networking with different companies and even with, you know, guys that are, you know, your so-called competition, start networking with these guys. And some of these guys have more business than they can take on and sometimes they will uh, subcontract these properties out to you I, I know that that has happened to me several times all right so let's touch on it never give up on yourself or your business because this business is yourself so some of the other things that of course you need you need yourself people don't understand when I say that but how can you start a business get it off the ground without yourself you know so get started now you know, you might have been talking about this for years and years and you just never got started. So that's that's why I say the first thing you need is yourself. It's the only way you're going to get it started. Nobody can do this business for you. So get started. And we touched on some other things about, you know, the hustler versus the professional. Be professional at all times. You know how you handle yourself, your business your workers, your clients. Be professional, even if you have to let people go. Be professional. There's nothing wrong with professional courtesy. So always, you know, cut, conduct yourself in a professional manner. We talked about things like equipment that you would need. Get your top brands. You know, why not shoot for the stars? Get your top, top brands. Um, you can find these on Craigslist sometimes. Go to your local repair shops. You know, these guys sometimes do a phenomenal job on equipment and sometimes uh, guys leave equipment in there and just can't you know foot the bill so check those out it's no different than buying a used vehicle you know for those of you who want to start out with everything brand new you know go right ahead it's all on you whatever you want to do it is your money your business also start up with the worker like I said before there's nothing wrong with starting out with the worker don't ever try to do this by yourself I wouldn't care if it's 10 clients. If you're really wanting to build, and I'm sure that's why you're looking at the, you know, this video, start out with the worker. Don't be that guy who's doing it by himself and you're struggling to do it by yourself. You go home, contemplate every day, you know, why am I doing this and all that kind of crap. Flyers. <laughs> Let's touch on that. I hate flyers. My background, uh, I've been a salesman for a long time and started out doing, you know, lawns for a long time as well. But the, the biggest part of my career has always been in sales and flyers just don't work. Here's how you use flyers. It's, it's how you use them. Remember that. That's key. Give your flyers to your current customers. Stop going door to door. Guys, look at the ratios. You don't believe me? Google it. Why do something that, that doesn't work? What's the definition of insanity? Being insane, what is that definition? All right, okay. Cut going door to door out. Produce your flyers for your customers. And I can't wait till you guys comment below because you guys are gonna say, this guy is crazy, this guy's off his rocker. Trust me when I tell you, you're gonna feel so great saying, oh wow, guess what babe? I passed out a thousand flyers today. I can't wait for my phone to ring. Yeah, right. Wait until you get that one call. And then that one call, somebody leaning on the fence. And then for you guys who said, oh, it works for me. Yeah. How much did you price your services at? $20 near free. So just don't do it. You know, look at, you know, when you come from the sales world, a lot of lawn care people don't, you know, they don't, they don't come from a background of sales. So when you look at it from that aspect, spend your time wisely. No different than the person, that lawn care company who's sitting on the freeway or sitting somewhere for about an hour in the truck. That's a waste of time. Group your clients together. 
you know, if you're in a certain area on a Monday, then you have a, a client in the same area and you go and do it on Friday. Why not group them together on a Monday? You save so much money on gas. You know, how many of you guys like actually putting gas in your vehicles? You know, let's be honest. Be honest with yourself. That's another thing, too. Honesty is the best policy that goes all the way around, not just with your clients and workers, but yourself. Keep it real with yourself. You know, why are you in this business? You know, what are some ways that you that this would make it a, the, the, the best job in the world, the best career in the world? Be honest with yourself. Make it happen because this is yours. OK, those customers that you get that complain all the time, drop them. Why keep them? You guys, you, you've been there. I know you have. The customers that make you feel like this is their business and it's not yours. Why go through that crap? It's crap. It's your business. Okay? They want to tell you how to run a business, then they need to put in all the grunt work that you put in for your business. You get to a certain point, start dropping them. Hell, matter of fact, if you want to make more money off of them, start subcontracting that crap out. You know, yeah, don't, don't just lose money. I'm sorry, guys. Don't just lose it. Find somebody you can subcontract it out to. Then if, and then if that doesn't work, then drop them. Okay, let's be smart about this. Okay, don't don't waste time. You know, if you're going to be at a client's home, you guys agree on 10 o'clock. Don't be there at 10.03. Excuses have to be non-existent. You need to be there at 9.45. Be there and be ready to go. I can't tell you the number of times you hear, you know, well, what happened with your last locker guy? He just didn't show up. These guys are just losing money. Don't be that guy. Okay? Please don't be that guy. Start your business off the right way. You have to start it off the right way. All right? So, listen, we'll see you next time on Mighty Lawns. We're going to give you some more tips on what you need to uh, start your business. So, here it is. Business cards. You need a website. All right? You need some funky music on that website. Get you some hats, some shirts. Brand your business, of course. Okay? Colors for your business. Come up with something. Okay? Something in, in, um, that coincides with lawn care. Do that. Get you guys some hats. Stay hydrated. Number one rule, stay hydrated, okay? You need a worker, remember that. Good equipment, all right? Then you'll get the great equipment. Use Craigslist, you have to use it. Find people who are on their down and outs and just really ready to get rid of the equipment because they suck. They didn't want to do the business. They thought they could, but they couldn't do it. Find that guy who's willing to give you everything for almost under a grand. There's that guy out there. Trust me, I ran into him several times. OK, get your postcards. Remember, flyers, if you're going to make them, give them to current customers. Scratch out door to door. OK, just scratch that out. You have to. It's the only way to go. All right. Your host, DK, here. We'll see you next time on Mighty Lawns. Remember, for all of our Lawn Talk one on one videos, check us out on the network. Trade Day 1982. Like and subscribe to us. At the bottom, leave your comments. We'll see you next time. Host DK here on the show. Mighty Lawns. We'll see you next time, guys. Nice talking with you. Remember, get started now. Don't wait. Hey guys, welcome back to Mighty Lawns. Your host here, DK. Remember, comment below. Like and subscribe to us on the network. Mighty Lawns. All right, so let's get back into it. Part five of how to start a lawn care business so you see the photograph here guys got a nice uh, walk behind mower and this is a key point walk behind mower if you guys are looking to upgrade your business and you want to really make some nice residual income that will allow you to retire and <laughs> basically retire early start going after commercial accounts why commercial accounts because that's the money that's going to come in every month that you're going to be able to account for. You don't have to worry about them dropping off. That is to say, of course, unless you are providing sloppy service. And, you know, if you're tuning into Mighty Lawns right now, uh, I don't believe that you're one of those kind of companies. So let's recap what we talked about before, the things that you need to start a successful business versus just being a hustler. Business cards. Why business cards? So that way you're not looking like the idiot when a customer potential customer sees you at a gas station or grocery store wherever they see you you don't have to worry about saying oh i don't have a business card but i do have a paper and pen let me you know you don't have to be that guy 
Always be professional. Have the business card handy. All righty. What was the other one? We talked about trucks versus vans. I'm uh, I love vans. Okay, I'll be honest about that. With a van, you don't have to worry about your equipment being stolen or anything of that nature because it's closed up all the time. Whereas when you're in a truck or things of that nature it can happen, vandalism, people stealing your uh, equipment. So that's why you know I I love the van and um, box truck options when you're doing a lawn care business. We talked about uh, enclosed trailers or open trailers. Once again, I love enclosed trailers because all of your equipment is locked up safe and sound. Just one less worry that you have to, you know, think about at night when you go to bed. Also talked about flyers. A lot of people have emailed us. Remember, email us at mighty lawn number one at yahoo.com and we'll actually uh you know post your comments and things of that nature and we'll talk about everything that you email to us uh you know i had somebody email me and say hey you know you said flyers wasn't a good option well there was a key to it i don't like putting out flyers because if you do the ratio you know do those numbers flyers never work but here's why i would use flyers give your flyers to your current customers now you said, well, you said you don't like flyers, but here's how you spin it. Here's how you use the flyers in a positive way and get higher numbers. Okay. Higher numbers, of course, being customers that, are, you know, will give you a call back, you know, give you a call for service. Use these flyers as your referral coupons, whatever you want to call them, referral fees. Okay. Give these flyers to your customers, whatever price you want to put on them, put a price on them and hey, tell your customer, hey. You know, word of mouth is really will help my business down the line if you don't mind passing along this good information to your neighbor or to a relative. Guess what? They're going to listen to your customer more than probably they would listen to you. Okay, so they're going to take their advice. So there you have it. That's how you use your flyers. So let's get right back into this thing. Okay, you're on video number five of the seven part series of how to operate a successful lawn care business. Remember, we also talked about having a crew. Start out even with even if it's with one worker, start off with that worker. Don't ever try to do this by yourself or you'll never make money. Even the people that's out there saying, well, you know, I make two, three thousand dollars a month. OK, wouldn't you like to double that, triple that? Let's be honest here. Oh, no, I'm comfortable with just making, you know, my two or three thousand dollars a month. You, you, you shouldn't be. If that's the case, just go back and, you know, go back into the uh, workforce. OK. So stay tuned for video six later on. But right now, let's get into this thing. OK, so one of the biggest things that we always talk about is a heavy marketing you know, plan when you wanting to do your business. That should always be key. Don't try to market one time and think that's it. You know, you might have targeted a neighborhood once and you didn't have high results. Well, try again with those postcards or, or how, you know, your mailers that you're mailing to people. You know, we talked about not using flyers, but let's say you use flyers. We'll start knocking on doors and try to sign people up the same day. How about doing that? You got to figure out different ways to get your business to grow. And that's one of the ways I believe that will work. Get people to commit. Ask for the sale. Close it. You know, be a Mariano Rivera of the lawn care industry. Close the deal. Don't just put your business cards on the door or your postcards on the door or, you know, even when you think about mailing out to them, uh, to your potential customers, start locking them in. You know, talk to A or B. You know, don't get the person's, oh, I'll go to speak with my wife. Hey, when they say that, hey, you know what? Do you think your wife would really care if you would spend an extra 30 bucks? You got to think of it along those lines. Start closing the deal. You know, become salesmen. You know, start looking on YouTube. Start trying to take classes on how to be a closer. And I believe that that will help you out with your business. Once again, I'm your host, DK, here. Stay tuned for video number six. Like and subscribe to us on Mighty Lawns. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. 
Hey, welcome back to Mighty Longs. Your host DK here. So let's get back into it. Video six. Remember, like and subscribe to us on the network Mighty Longs. Check out all of our other videos, especially part one of how to start a successful lawn care business. Well, once again, your host DK here. We're in number six of this seven part series and we're going to get right into this thing we recapped and you know basically we we're talking about marketing strategies you know passing out your business cards uh, introducing yourself and your company properly we've talked about uh, how to use flyers and why not to use them uh, in certain um, aspects of a uh, long care business when you're starting to uh, get your feet wet out there we've also talked about you know vans versus trucks um, we've talked about enclosed trailers versus uh, open trailers we've talked about box trucks versus your regular truck you know talked about having a one-man show versus having a crew so let's get into this thing okay Right now, we're on part six of the seven part series, and you're probably wondering, okay, when is he going to get to the meat? When is he going to get to the basically the juicy part to tell us how to really operate a successful lawn care business? And here's the first and probably the only key that you need to know it starts with you. It starts with you being successful, you know, believing in yourself enough to say, you know what, I'm going to go at this nonstop. I'm going to have tunnel vision, and I'm never going to give up. And that's pretty much it. That's probably the best advice you'll ever hear on the Internet. You're the key. You hold the key to your own success. And you say, well, how do you mean? Remember, also email us so we can answer your questions here live on um, our YouTube channel here at Mighty Lawn one at Yahoo dot com. And we'll answer all of your questions here. Also, remember, subscribe to us and comment below. So I say that you hold the key because let's look at it into a point of marketing. If you only pick out one neighborhood and you market one time, how successful would you be? You know, let's really take the time to think about that. Now, what if you say, OK, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a strategy and break down all of the zip codes in my county alone and develop a really a high scheme marketing uh, plan so that my business can be successful. You know, instead of just doing one neighborhood, why not try to do 30 to 50 neighborhoods instead of doing 100 homes? You know, when you buy your thousand flyers or <laughs> business cards or postcards or wherever you buy them from instead of saying I'm just gonna hit a hundred homes make sure you pass out a, a thousand flyers you know how many times have you guys ordered a thousand flyers and you've only used half of them and you say well these didn't work you know how many times have you just contacted the one neighborhood but you didn't go back you know how many times do you really think that a person needs to see your advertisement you know how many times do you yourself see advertisement for everywhere where you bank you know your favorite restaurant your favorite gas station your favorite oil you like to put in your vehicle think about those things how many times do you see those advertisements so you got to think you know what i've got to be just like the big guys i can't just you know let people see my name one time guess what they're going to forget because 30 other guys are going to come putting stuff on their door and guess what you're going to be part of that population they're going to throw your stuff away along with someone else but if you could make a lasting impression as like I said before, doing it the proper way, if you are going to pass out flyers, knock on the door, close them, get a commitment from these guys, have a, have a start date, say, hey, you know what, we're going to start on April 5th, we'd like to sign you up, we'd like to earn your business, start introducing yourself and your business the proper way so you can actually, you know, garner some success, you know, that, that's the biggest key. You hold the key to your success, you know, because this is not, you know, it, it doesn't have to be hard. This can be easy. That's what I like to say. This is as easy as you make it, you know, okay? They're not just going to fall in your lap. You have to go get them, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Once again, your host DK here. You're tuning in to Mighty Lawns on YouTube. So let's get right back into it. Some other questions that we had was, you know, um, we had a question from Bill out of Oklahoma. He was asking, well, he said, DK, you talked about some different ways to use your business cards. 
And he wanted to know, basically, I guess in a nutshell, what's the most effective way to use a business card? Because I actually emailed him and then told him, I said, you know, a lot of people when they use their business cards, I feel like they're using them wrong. Use your business cards as sort of a billboard. You know, when you go and order your business cards from wherever you order them from, make it a billboard as I, you know, say by putting all the services that you do on there. You know, of course, have the name of your business and your name and telephone number. Yeah. But make a spot on there where you can show all your services and your starting price, you know, from forty five dollars, whatever your price that you're going to start at. Put that on your business card. You know, that's like a smaller version of a postcard. And why do I say do that? Well, guess what? When you meet a person for the first time, you want your card to stand out because guess how many other cards look just like yours? Exactly. So make yours stand out because first impressions are everything. So if they they see your card and say, wow, you know, I spoke with this guy from Mighty Lawns and they do all this. They don't have to wonder. They don't, you know, when they give you a call, it's going to be to sign up for service, not to call and ask you, you know, hey, you know, such and such, would, do you aerate in the fall? You know, different things of that nature. So think about that when you create a business card, write down your different services. Also, I know a lot of you guys do this free estimates. Well, why not just do this? Let's just say you go door to door with your business cards. You've already looked at the yard. Why not just go ahead and put a price on the back? Or to be able to close a potential customer, why not say, I tell you what, we've solved you know, the size of your yard. Uh, we do these yards all the time. We're going to get you a price of $40 to start you off with. Start trying to close these customers. And that's the best way to do it. So remember, put all your services on your business cards because this is a first impression. You don't just want to blend in with the rest of the thousands of lawn care businesses who are already handing them business cards on a daily basis. All right, so we'll see you next time. Stay tuned for part seven of the how to start a successful lawn care business. Your host DK here. Remember, comment below, subscribe to us, okay? Give us a thumbs up. Remember, also email us so we can answer all your questions at mightylawn1 at yahoo.com. We'll see you next time, folks. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to my loans. It's been a long time, but here we are. Remember below, below to us also share this video and express any feelings you have in the comment section below. So let's get right into it. We finally have tackled part seven of how to start a lawn care business, and I'm hoping you have enjoyed all six parts of this series. So let's get right into it. Your host is to be also to check out Long Talk. The number one rule in starting your business is to have adequate equipment. If you followed my videos before, uh, you'll be able to notice that the equipment that was used to start off was garbage. I believe uh, we started off with a wild uh, straight shaft trim. Biggest thing you probably want to know, why is this guy saying don't start with crap equipment? Well, have you ever heard the saying, you can get in? Um, basically, here it is. You're servicing customers, okay? You want the yards to look the absolute best. Why is that, you might ask? Well, look at it this way. You're cutting your yard, yes, you're getting paid to do it. But not only do you want your customer to be satisfied, best way is to have the best equipment possible. As you see now, we're using Echo equipment, two Honda push mowers, nice Echo backpack blower. I have another one that I'm letting one of my workers use right now, which is the bigger commercial Echo backpack blower. This is key, ladies and gentlemen, for starting a long term business. As you can see, I started this uh, year in a van, small van, uh, with the cheap route. 
next year we're going to move to a 16 foot box truck. Even with that, even with starting with the van, um, it's okay to do uh, when you have you know, small accounts. But when you're really looking to make money in this business, you need to have the biggest and best equipment possible. for great deals on Craigslist, but make sure those deals are for greater, greater piece of crap equipment like I started off with. You, know, you can find great deals on, you know, your Husqvarna or your, your, your uh, equipment, of course, Honda, you know, if you want your Pro, your bad boy models, things of that nature. It's, it's not bad to look on Craigslist instead of going to your uh, local big box hardware store to find your equipment. Also, number three, the biggest rule is have every piece of equipment that you would think you would need. Uh, you, know, you don't want to be the guy to get on the property and you have to turn down work because you don't have uh, the necessary tools to do a job, um, i.e. Uh, tree pruners. <laughs> you know, you want to be able to, you know, shrub, uh, you know, prune the shrubs, things of that nature. Also, organization is key uh, if you looked at my other videos you know I, I told you you know being organized is very very key uh, it saves you time which in turns will save you money because you're not having to thumb around and look for the you know oh I used this weed eater on the last property where is it at now you know you don't have to worry about that uh, also number four making sure your workers are well equipped to do the job mentally and physically uh, you know not to knock on anybody um, and I probably shouldn't even say this but I'm gonna say it um, making sure physically that they're well equipped to do the job that means you know not overweight you know making sure they're at a, a, a nice balanced weight so they can do the job not just for a couple of yards but you know if you've got 15 yards a day you want them to bank it 1 through 15, okay? Um, mentally equipped. They got to know that this is physical, <laughs> I mean, labor. They've also got to understand that this is, uh, you know, even wear and tear on the brain. Uh, the guys I started out with, uh, they didn't really make it because they couldn't do it. Uh, you know, one was his first job. He couldn't make it. Uh, the second came from warehouse work. Struggled every day to make it. You know, he wondered, oh, what time will we be done? What time will we be done? And he just never grasped the concept. Uh, make sure also that whoever you hire at least has some sort of experience under their belt. You know what? Scratch that. I shouldn't say some sort of experience because I don't mean just helping the dad pull the weed eater string. Make sure they've worked for a company before, a professional uh, landscaping company. That will be key. Also, make sure that your employees are interchangeable. Uh, basically meaning that they can do whatever it takes to finish the job. You don't want to be tied into a worker who can, can okay? You don't want to be tied into somebody who can just cut the grass. You don't want to be tied into somebody who can just weed eat, okay? You want somebody, if you could, you would want to clone yourself. So that's the kind of person you want to look for. You know what? You need the person who's, uh, like I said, mentally equipped. You know, the, that adaptation, uh, they don't have a problem if, Oh, you know what? I'm not going to be cutting on this yard. Okay, no problem. I'm going to I can weed eat this yard. You don't want somebody that's locked in and can only cut the yard or who can only blow. I had a guy I didn't even blow. And you know, tell my partner all the time and say, "Hey, that's unbelievable." Well, no, this guy really can't blow. He doesn't know how. So you don't want to be locked into people like that. You want you know, when you're doing a business representation to your customers, uh, you want people that represents not only the business but you. You know, you want to. You need a person or people uh, who you, if you needed to go and handle some business, you could leave your business to. And what do I mean by that? Well, prime example: if you had to go pick up some pine straw from from your local big box store, well, you need to know that you know Billy and Tommy can be left in the hands. Um, and can take care of your business and if a customer had questions that they could handle those questions and not say oh I don't know let's wait till the boss gets back 
Uh, also, we talked about making sure you have business cards. Have plenty of business cards. Never be the guy who runs out of your business cards and who has to go back to the truck or who has to write your name and number on a piece of paper. You don't want to be that guy. Trust me. We did the episode uh, postcards versus flyers. Yeah, it's fine to use both, but I would use the flyers for my current customers. Uh, I wouldn't use them for brand new customers. If you're going to have, you know, if you're going to be the one that use flyers, use them for the current customers that you have. Okay, uh, postcards they're more professional. Not more, they are professional. Versus flyers, to me, just are not professional. Also, do you know on your postcards? Do a lawn evaluation. Uh, when you're signing up new customers, you know, let them know what it's going to take to get their yard in tip top shape. Uh, also, you know, give them a before and after what your guys would uh, would be able to help the yard or you know how you could help their yard. Um, and then when you do the lawn evaluation, you know, let them know what's going on with the lawn now. So they don't just look at you as a some some who doesn't know uh, what he's talking about. Okay. Once again, make sure you check out all six parts of how to start a lawn care business. Also, check out the lawn care video I have of how to start a lawn care business with four under three thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So also, make sure you got them as cans. I would say you only need about two, and make sure that, you know they're the the big gas cans, not something small that you have to keep going back to the store. Also. Fill up on your gas cans. Just fill them all the way up. If you don't use all the gas, that's fine. It's better to have extra than, you know, have less, okay? Fill up. You don't want to have any stops uh, during the day, okay? That's key as well. Um, also, you know, you want to make sure 